Well, Biden has Kamala. And while the Biden administration works behind the scenes to repair the vice president's public image ahead of the 2024 election, our so-called border czar, well, she hasn't made much progress in fixing our immigration crisis. Instead, she's sitting down for interviews with ABC News and calling out Republican leaders for sending migrants to her doorstep. There are many critics, some within your own party, who say uh, that there's more that, that your administration should be doing on the migration front. Do they have a point? Human beings should not be treated as pawns in a political game. What is happening in terms of sending these migrants, most of whom have fleed great harm, and sending them across the country for the sake of some political showmanship is just irresponsible. If you want to deal with the problem, then do it if you are a leader by participating in the solution. And one very clear solution, very significant solution, has been in front of us for years now. We need to pass immigration reform. And you had a chance. You had both houses of Congress. You didn't do it. Later in that same interview, the vice president was asked how much race and gender have to do with her historically low poll numbers. There are reports that say that you have the lowest approval rating of any vice president. I'm curious how much of a role, if any, that you feel race and gender play in that? Well, there are polls that also say I have great approval ratings. I think the point that has to be made is that there are attempts to create distractions away from the accomplishments of our administration. Hmm, I have great approval ratings. To which polls is she referring, Richard? Oh, well, there's a couple of things there. I, I think that where the vice president's right is when she talks about how we deal with migration in this country, because I think both things can be true. We do have a problem on our southern border, but and the administration can do more around that. But at the same time, there's a lot of work that Congress can do to pass a bill that would modernize our immigration so we can use the Internet and we could use judges online. to. But Democrats had through. both houses. Yeah, but you need t you still need 10 senators to pass a bill like that because it was blocked by the filibuster in many times, in many cases, in many times. But uh, but moving forward around how we deal with her approval numbers as we get into this presidential race, I do think that the vice president needs to come out. I think there needs to be a story told about her that talks about the work that she's currently doing in this moment. The White House has really positioned her as somebody that's really involved in their rapid response. We saw her in Florida. We saw her push back against Ron DeSantis's new Florida state standards, saying that slaves benefited from slavery. We've seen her push back against many of these like early abortion bans in, current in some states. We've seen her being out there more and more often, which I think is probably where they want to see her positioned. And I think it's now on the White House to tell that story in a better but way. Which, which polls? I mean, was she referring to? Do you know? I I'm not sure which poll she was looking well, at. Well, we have some polls, Emily. We will pop them up. Marquette, 33 percent favorable versus 58 percent unfavorable Gallup 53 percent unfavorable NBC 49 percent unfavorable in all these cases double digit net negatives and the problem Kaylee in addition to her un not being able to cite any polls that have her as favorable because they are all dismally low is how she went on to deflect even further so I loved what you just said Richard I wish that you were her campaign or her communications advisor because she sounded a lot better than she did in that moment she went on to say after we after we showed her right there so it's a deflection from the accomplishments and then she focused on job creation and our integrity on the global stage so she said that me and Joe have created 13 million jobs you know better than anyone on this couch, Cheryl, that 72% of those were just recovery. Recovery There's jobs. No creation. The gaslighting continues. We know that the economy right now is actually deteriorating, especially when you include the value of the dollar and the fact that wages are the same. And when she talks about the integrity on the global stage, is she talking about Yellen bowing to the Chinese vice premier? Is she talking about Joe missing dinner with NATO's, NATO leaders? Is she talking about the botched Afghanistan withdrawal where we abandoned our allies and sacrificed 13 American service members? So in that moment, when given an opportunity for her to shine, for her to represent to all of us Americans what exactly they have been doing, I find it laughable and also telling that she utterly failed in that second too. You know, she she disappointed. She's disappointed me several times. But I think the biggest thing that, she, that the opportunity that she really has blown is the fact that she made history being the first uh, female uh, African American vice president. I mean, wow! That what an opportunity! What what an incredible achievement! And then to blow it the way she has done, she's been a mess on the border, to your point. She's been a mess on AI. I can't believe they tried to put her out in front of AI. Well, she's, the second word is oh, intelligence. Well, I mean, what was that? You know, but also, too, the, the, you know, going back to the economy, 
You know, over this past weekend, you know, Joe Biden was out there talking about Bidenomics and his economic record. Oh, that's a little debatable. Uh, <laughs> very debatable. But she actually, I think maybe by accident, I don't know, contradicted the president over the weekend about the economy. And I wish I had that sound like to play and queue up, but, I, but you can find but it easily. Let's put up where, where the president it's is, by mess. the way. Because I've, I've heard Joe Biden mention it's worth mentioning that for the next 10 days, this is what this oh. man is doing, our president <laughs> on the beach. Yeah. Harris, that comes uh. as NBC say if, if Joe Biden, who you're looking at, is not the nominee, only 13 percent of Democrats want Kamala to run if Biden is in. 13 percent. Well, the wow. good news is as long as he's sitting Yikes. there, he can't make many things much worse. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we have that going for us for 10 days. Look, you talk about disappointment from the Vice President Kamala Harris. I thought she missed a great opportunity right then. And by the way, that was such a setup question from the reporter. Like, oh, is it because you're black and you're a woman? Mm. She easily could have said, no, it's not because of those things. No, it's not because I'm biracial, Indian, black, and that I'm a female. I have work to do. How about acknowledging what hasn't worked? taking some of those knives out of the hands of the, of the woke folk and saying, no, it has nothing to do with my gender or my race. We had real problems, and I tried to lean in, and I haven't succeeded, but I'm not going to give up. And then I'd lean on Richard for some of my talking points that you were giving earlier <laughs> to come forth with maybe some of the ideas that you would have. Yeah. I mean, this reporter is like pulling from 1956. Um, well, do you think it's because you're a woman that you're not doing well? I mean, come on, she could have owned that moment. She could have, but she didn't. So I'm right there with you. I'm disappointed as well, just for different reasons. Well, at least she's working and not at the beach, but that may be a bad thing for us. So I'll leave that to the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.